Nier Replicant version 1.22474487139 is a remaster of the PlayStation 3 game which was released exclusive in Japan back in 2010. The remaster brings you a more polished version of the game like enhanced graphics and frame rates. I never played the original before so I won't give you any comparison in terms of graphics, voice acting and the remastered soundtrack. This is going to be just an honest opinion on the remaster itself. So let's begin. Nier Replicant starts in a post-apocalyptic world showing your brother and sister struggling to survive. After a short introduction into the battle system, the game jumps 1412 years later where mankind returns to Gru to a medieval civilization. Humanity is still struggling with the dangerous shades that live outside the cities and villages but also the disease called Black Scroll. The sister of our main protagonist fell ill with a Black Scroll and our hero tries to find a cure for it. During that journey, we find companions with their own motives and reasons to follow our hero. This is a really quick summary what's going on, but the truth is, the story is so much more complex and you may have to play through it a few times to really understand everything. I have to admit, I was totally confused and lost and didn't even know what's going on until I could somehow look through some things, but that took me some hours. Is this book gonna fly behind me forever? Nier Replicant can be seen as an action adventure game with RPG elements, since you may level up and can equip certain upgrades to your weapon and attacks, but there is no skill tree or attacks to unlock. Or a young warrior fights with one-handed weapons for fast combos, heavier two-handed weapons for some extra damage, and spears if you need the range. But that's not all, early in the game going to meet Grimo Vice, a companion that gives us magic abilities we will need throughout the game, especially in some sections. The coolest thing in combat is that you can really combine everything together. You can switch weapon in between while rushing down your opponent, combine magic attacks with your current strikes and also charge your magic attack while attacking your enemy to finish your combo strong with a magic attack. I never had any FPS drops or game crashes. I know it's actually something not really worth mentioning, especially since this game is a remaster, but I had a remaster that suffered a lot, especially on release. I am looking at you, Kingdoms of Only Re-Reckoning. Something that fascinated me during my playthrough was that the game changed in certain sections the camera angle and gave you, even with 101 same gameplay, a different kind of game. It's like the game reinvented itself constantly to keep everything fresh and exciting. My favorite section of the whole game was probably when I entered this mansion that reminds me so much of Resident Evil 1. The RPG becomes suddenly a mysterious hack and slash for a certain of time. The soundtrack is hands down a 10 out of 10. It just fits perfect into each heartbreaking scene from the game. Like you feel through the soundtrack the suffering, pain and struggle the characters go through this journey. I can't remember a game that had such an emotional impact. This arm is an accursed weapon. I thought I would only need it until I had earned my revenge. Once that happened, <laughs> I figured it was all over. But there's a reason I'm alive, that my arm is alive. And there's a reason for your eyes, too. Kaine! This game could have been easily a masterpiece, but unfortunately I found myself in many situations with a lot of wasted potential here. Let me give you one example where I almost felt angry how much better this section could have been. The Forest of Myth. I expected some kind of mystery forest to explore with some enemies, tough boss fights, but it was the smallest village in the game with just three people on it. The boss fight to get a key item was just a text riddle story. After 10 minutes you have seen and explored enough. The worst part however are probably the side quests, because 80% of them are just fetch quests. It's just collect stuff for people. That's five lizard tails and five mouse tails. I need ten bundles of wool, five lumps of natural rubber, and ten goat hides. I need five logs, twenty deaded metal boards, and ten stripped bolts. It's so bad, even the NPCs will make fun of you. I'll let you know as soon as I need my floor swept or a toilet cleaned. <laughs> 
I did a bunch of those side quests and ended up being completely overleveled already mid game. In fact I was so overleveled that boss fights became a joke and I had only 46% of those side missions in total. That didn't really ruin the experience but the fact that you can't set the difficulty level higher during the game made all the combos, moves and weapon upgrades completely irrelevant for me since I just needed like to slice them twice to kill them. I needed for my first playthrough 25 hours since I was overleveled and I dropped the collecting side activities after some time. If you're going for the 100% which includes unlocking all endings, I would say this game brings you easily over the 40 hour mark. Also there is some bonus challenges after playing through which was nice. Since I haven't played the original on the PlayStation 3, I am thankful for this remaster because I was able to play an RPG with one amazing story, character development and experience one of the most powerful soundtracks I have ever heard. Unfortunately in some places I wish they would have been done more or better here, the side activities are repetitive and boring over time and only interesting for those who want to go for the 100%. So my final rating is an 8 out of 10, it may be to some personal issues, not a masterpiece, but I highly recommend this to anyone who likes RPG or any kind of adventure game. I want to thank you for watching my review and see you.